I started doing my new sounds program towards the end of 1982, and almost immediately I started hearing like rumors about this the string quartet on the West Coast that was doing all of this new music. People whose music I would play on the show would start sending me like cassettes, tapes of, of things that they'd done that hadn't yet been released. And I started hearing Kronos Quartet recordings, you know, not like commercial recordings, but things that they had done for the composers. Probably around the mid 80s, I started putting uh, this book together called New Sounds, A Listener's Guide to New Music. And in all of the interviews, one after another, all of these people would say, yeah, Kronos Quartet, Terry Riley, Lamont Young, Paul Drescher, I mean, all of these guys would be like, you got, you know, they're, they're the most amazing quartet. They're doing things nobody else has ever done with, with string quartet. And it was around that time that they finally began to make, like, commercially available recordings that made their way here. And, you know, it was one of those rare occasions where, uh, you know, a band has been really hyped, and then you get the record, and they're as good as advertised. They were a new music ensemble at first. Um, they sort of helped define what new music would be, and as soon as they had done that, they started, like, breaking that definition down and, and redefining it and extending it. So there was this kind of abs absorption of influence from all over the world, from rock and jazz, but also from Asian music and African music and stuff like that. So that's what came in. And then what came out was not just this body of work, but also this kind of Catholic, diverse, eclectic approach to music making that it, I think has been hugely influential on the subsequent at this point, probably subsequent two or three generations of, of musicians. The current crop of musicians who, who move so easily between uh, indie rock and contemporary classical music, I mean, that's a generation of musicians who owe a lot of, of their approach to music to Kronos. The fact that they have access to all of this different music and that it's all considered equally good and, and equally useful. Pieces of Africa, uh, the, the, the work with uh, musicians from Azerbaijan and Uzbekistan and Van An Vo from Vietnam, and, you know, it's, it's, it's something that they continue to this day. And maybe I can sort of narrow it down to those two things, the kind of, you know, exploding of the image of the string quartet and this all-encompassing you know, Duke Ellington's dictum that there are only two kinds of music, you know, and you want to play the good stuff, yeah. wherever it's from.